I'm gonna come out and say it right now. I was so dreading this film. And really, is it really worth saying why I was dreading this? I had not seen the original two Purge movies when they came out. Given that I originally was not seeing every movie that came out, and I didn't, and I didn't have much of an interest in those films as a whole. And also because they looked like stereotypical horror, trying to basically capitalize on on, on, on the street cred they had, and also looked like as if um, they're just trying to go more over the top. So, and also, yeah, um, at, so I went to see this movie, and I constantly asked myself, why am I seeing this instead of the BFG or Legend of Tarzan? Oh, right, because all of the showings were sold out. So, to make it brief, I went straight into the Purge election year. Was it really a waste of time? Well guys, I'm gonna be brief. I admit that the first two films did do well and people were exactly a fan of those, especially the critics. But this one... What was going on here, guys? Honestly, I did, I did not expect this. What went wrong here? Honestly, I haven't seen this film go, um, and try for social commentary and fail. Um, go over the top and fail miserably. Basically, or basically be, um, be all over the top in terms of the violence, in terms of the acting, in terms of everything that went on here. So in other words, I'll, I'll push the anarchy. Um, there are at least a few... I, yeah, yeah, no, never mind. Overall, this movie, not good at all. Not good at all. So, so I don't have much to say about this film, so let's get right into it. First things first, let's talk about the original two Purge films. Now, the, the original premise to Purge is basically the fact that um, there's this annual 12-hour thing that happens once a year called The Purge, where, where crime is legal for 12 hours and no ma and, and medical help is, um, is refused until The Purge is over. And for the first film, um, some critics conned to it, even though the film didn't do well critically, Many more critics gone to the next film, and it's, and it's not made enough money for a third film. Sadly, however, um, this film uh, got a suspicious, suspicious amount of critical acclaim, only for it to mostly be, be, be crapped away, uh, as it now has like a 55% of Rotten Tomatoes. But, and, and, and after um, hearing about this, those two films, I had no interest in seeing them, but in this, I'm gonna stand by that, honestly. So let's talk about the, the films in detail. Specifically, we'll start out with the characters. One of the cast, many returning cast members that come back from this film is one of the characters from the first film, um, played by Frank Grillo from Captain America: Civil War. He plays a he plays a former cop who's now a bodyguard to the senator uh, who's trying to run for president, and she's being sought after by um, by the by by this like pseudo type religion who made the purge, and they're basically trying to. Trying to um, kill her because um, kill her because they believe that she is a virus, a virus to the rest of the world because she's trying to destroy the purge. Um, uh, especially after um, that, the first time in the purge, they killed her family, um, which is not seen in any of the films. However, um, they basically try, one of the running mates is running against her, and they're trying to find ways to have her killed so he can win the race and the purge can continue. It, it, that doesn't sound cohesive, and that's because this film barely is cohesive. Which brings us to um, to one of the uh, which brings us to um, the rest of the characters. Now, outside of Frank Grillo's character and Elizabeth Mitchell's character, you can kind of see. Uh, uh, see um, you can at least say that they're passable in this film, but every other character is just basically. Uh, either lifeless or over the top, and have some of the, be the worst dialogue in the movie. Now I'll get to the writing later, but let's go into the characters. Um, the final characters we basically have a deli owner who be a deli owner who's trying to protect his deli, especially from two shoplifters trying to break in. Uh, and as for the shoplifters, guys, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna mince words here. Those two shoplifters, they were all like, I want my candy bar. I'm gonna come and get my candy bar, and I'm gonna rip your blood <laughs> Yeah, you got you got that. Um, so you have to see how over the top this film is. And, and as for the rest of the characters, oh, I won't say I will will say that they at least serve their purposes in this film, and they at least are strong and kick and kick, and kick at least some ass. The fact that they don't even try to do anything to. Um, to actually add something to this film is just borderline pathetic. pathetic. Especially the, the villain characters, they are some of the most over-the-top acting I've seen in a horror film. Well, if you haven't seen over-the-top over acting this bad, you won't see it at all since Batman and Robin. And honestly, 
that's all I can really say about the characters, because uh, if I talk about more about those characters, I'm just gonna blow my top. So let's at least talk about one of the most inoffensive things about this film, the direction. Um, well, I can definitely say that the, the, the first, the director from the first two films, James DeMarco, he basically directed this film, and he doesn't really add much in terms of substance to this film. Uh, he does, um, he does have a good, the film does have good cinematography, I can definitely say that, but sometimes cinematography, he tries to go for like gray shots, and tries to go for a lot of point of view shots of the characters, especially how they're killed and such. But all times there's just so much quick cutting and so much editing going on that it's hard to actually follow what's going on in the story because it's just so fast paced to the point you can barely follow what's going on, especially especially whenever they do get attacked by um by, by people who are who are taking part in the purge. So in other words, yeah, the direction is okay, but okay, the cinematography does um, does at least add something to the film, but I'm not sure that it doesn't add much. But if I dance around this HG long enough, we have to get to the one of the biggest things about this film that really sinks it. The politics. Apparently, apparently, um, this movie is trying to try and make a bit, try to make a huge stab at social commentary. And yet, it comes out with one of the most um, violently political and misplaced social commentary issues I've ever seen in this film. Basically, so here's the deal. I got one thing uh, only when it comes to good social commentary. You basically comment on something on something in today's media. You make it relatable without trying to sound sound like you're preaching to anybody. And you basically you basically try to make. And basically, I'm um, trying not to offend people in the process. Oh, yeah, still trying to make it sound relevant. Relevant. And but I say all this because in this film, no one, um, James DeMarco doesn't even try to hit any of them. For, for one, they basically, for one, he basically takes um, basically takes the whole uh, the whole um, motif that violence violence is the way to fix things, and why should we cow because someone wants to take away our freedom? Uh, our freedom, um, especially to kill people, you know, basically you have to hold, you can take our lives, but you can't take our freedom motif. It's like he basically, his motif basically took that motif, applied to social commentary in this film, and basically said, hey, hey, the purge is freedom. The Americans, the Americans want, um, want to be free to kill people, so they have to kill the senator uh, to basically secure their freedom. You know, you know, because they're, because they're over the top outlaws. And... And you know what? Even though, even if I did have some agree somewhat with these people, um, with the issues in this film, I still want to be associated with them. Or even mention it because of how badly he presents them, presents them. Especially because the writing is so sloppy, so over the top, and so horrible that it can't even back it up. And as for the writing, well, well, let me just say this. I've. I, 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 I get trying to go for um, go for writing has characters kind of speak their minds, but again, not only, is, not only is the script badly written, but some of the scenes are so are so strongly constructed, and especially the end scene toward the church, would it be uh, any scene in the church which basically has this religion that the that the, that, the, that Nefa basically sets up and and basically tries to like perform some killings in it. I gotta say, this is one of the most strongly constructed scenes in this film, and basically. I get it. I get it. To trying to have some kind of like the Masonic Lodge meets the Catholic Church type thing. But if that thing was ever displayed in a film, I'm pretty sure the Catholic Church would be would have been offended. Both Catholics and other religions in general, especially those who kill for um, um who kill for their own religion. In other words, man, I know I'm kind of rambling here, but honestly, this this film is barely cohesive. That I can't even structure some good cohesive thoughts about it. I get they're trying to make a third film that tries to get more political and have some more depth to it. There is a way of doing this, but f but for one, social commentary is not something you can place in a f in a horror film, in a horror film, especially especially if you want to have a good, especially if you want to say something, especially considering that the characters here are almost complete morons. The writing does cannot back this up whatsoever. And although, although, although the direction may be pretty at points, points adds nothing to this film, and I sure hope that this is the final film, as the ending may imply. So for me, yeah, yeah, don't see this film, because I'm giving it a 4 out of 10, and no way are, am I ever going to see that again. Okay, folks, there are, there, are, there are other ways you can get this kind of point across, um, uh, the point across in terms of social commentary and political commentary, but horror films, no, no, j don't do this. Honestly, um, some people say that violence is the way to fix things, and if that, if that were the case, I will take I will take in a gun and blow that and, and blow the filmmaking crew behind this film to shreds.
So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Um, if, if, if you guys like what you see, uh, see, please like, subscribe, share this video. If you give me a comment, I, I'd be glad to appreciate. Um, in other words, and, and on top of that, just be sure to just be sure to check out my book in the links down below. I got more on, I got more more stuff in the way, and you guys, and, and you guys, you're doing good. Um, thanks a lot. Until then, I'm Ross Butler. This is Eminem Weekly. I'll see you soon.